Hi everybody, Mark here with My Engineering, and for today's video, we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough on how to set up and uh, execute an inspection on a particular piece using Innovmetrics PolyWorks Inspector. Uh, the piece that we're going to be using uh, is going to be this one half of a leak enclosure. Uh, we did a previous video where we scanned this this piece and created an STL file. Uh, so that's the file that we're going to be importing. Uh, for the purpose of this particular inspection, we do not have a CAD file, uh, but we do have a drawing. So the drawing is going to have all our dimensions that we need to uh, reference and the tolerances that apply. Um, the reason why we may want to use uh, 3D software like Poly uh, Innovmetric PolyWorks uh, to inspect a piece like this um, is there is some dimensions that are a little more challenging to, to uh, get a good accurate measurement than others. Uh, if you want to get just the, the total width of the piece or, or the height, um, obviously you could put a caliper on that. You're going to see six inches. It's going to be very good. Um, certain things that are a little more difficult to determine is, uh, let's say you need to measure the distance between these two holes. So it's supposed to be two inches. Uh, in order to get that measurement, you need to get the diameter of each hole, divide that di diameter by two to get the radius, add those two radiuses together, and then add that to the distance between the two pieces. That could be a lot of math, and there's a lot of different steps where there could be a little bit of error built into your measurements. Uh, and on top of that, it's a little bit time consuming. Uh, when we're using a digital 3D um, environment, we can just get the center line of that, uh, the axis of the cylinder, and uh, measure that center axis very, very quickly and accurately. Uh, other uh, items that are here that are important to measure, but can be a little bit difficult mechanically, um, so the inside face here uh, needs to be measured relative to the back face. Um, so that needs to be 5 eighths of an inch, but if you can imagine, a typical caliper isn't going to be able to reach over top very easily. Um, can be a little challenging to get that accurate measurement, and if the, the overall face has different uh, elevations, it also can be a little bit difficult to get a true reading. Uh, and then the most complicated one that we're going to be looking at today uh, to do mechanically would be this inside face down here. Uh, needs to be measured up against the radius, so the center of the radius that uh, would lead up to this 45 degree angle. Um, mechanically, incredibly difficult to do, uh, but digitally, they're gonna, I'm going to create a little cylinder um, that fits that radius, and we can measure the center line of that cylinder again to the back face, uh, so we get a very accurate measurement very quickly. All right, so I've opened up a new project in Inspector, and um, so you see our, our enclosure part right here. Um, what you're going to see, we're not going to get into a lot of the tools here today because of the nature of the inspection that we're going to be putting together, but this software is really good at doing both very, I would even say extremely complex inspections or very basic inspections uh, and, and giving you reliable results in both cases. Uh, but getting to this inspection that we're looking at here, if you're very familiar with 3D environments, the first thing that you might notice is the origin is kind of off in space. So our part here is not aligned to any kind of a, a coordinate system, so we're going to have to align that before we get going. So first thing we're going to do is pick some features. Uh, I think probably the easiest way to do this is going to be picking three different planes. And picking a feature on a polygonal model, um, although you know it doesn't have the built-in intelligence of a CAD model, but this software is very good at recognizing a, a surface for, for what it is. So in this case, we're going to select this area here, it recognizes that it's a plane, um, and you can see it selects the whole area, all the points that have sort of a common um, common features to the plane that it's recognizing, and it will use all that to create a best fit plane. So we're going to use that one. I'm going to pick one over here, and I'm going to grab the back side. So we have our three planes uh, created. So now we can go to our uh, alignment feature for perpendicular planes. Pick plane one. We're going to align that with, uh, we'll call that uh, YZ. Plane two, we'll do XZ. And plane three uh, will be the XY. Do a line. You can see it snaps now to the coordinate system. Okay, with that all out of the way, now we're starting to we're ready to start looking at our actual inspection. So this is the drawing that we're going to be using to build our inspection template, uh, and we're going to start off looking on the the left side of our our screen here. So um, this is going to be section AA. 
And essentially what we're going to have to do is we need to put a cylinder on each of the bolt up uh, holes here and then planes on basically all the different sides and on the inside to start uh, pulling our measurements um, dimensions from. So back here in Polyworks, uh, we need to select our features on Polygons tool. And we're just going to basically start selecting all these different uh, components. That's better. So I've now created these first three cylinders, and I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the cylinders. All right, so we have our, our six cylinders uh, generated. Uh, now what we're going to want to start doing is pulling planes on all the other surfaces. So again, it's the same same tool that we're using uh, to generate the planes the first time and the cylinders. You just click on a feature. It recognizes that it is, uh, is most likely a plane or a cylinder in these cases, and then you accept for each one. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of these features. The one last feature that I want to talk about before we move on to building the, the rest of the inspection is I put a cylinder right here. So you see it's called cylinder eight and center axis is kind of out here floating in space. Uh, what that is, is actually a cylinder built off the radius um, of this angle here where um, it, it goes from the, the side to this 45 degree angle. And the reason why I need to put that little cylinder there is, and we can look at the drawing here on this, portion of the drawing for the internal dimensions, we need to measure from the back wall up to that, that radius in order to determine the, the length of this, this wall here. Um, so you can imagine looking at uh, how you'd pull the dimensions off this mechanically would be a lot more difficult to, to determine where the center of that, that radius is. But uh, obviously in digital space, it's actually quite, quite an easy task to do. So now with all our features created, we are now ready to start putting in these, these measurements uh, that we need to pull. Uh, so we're going to work from the top down on this first one here for section AA. And so the very first one is six inches from side to side. We're going to go over here. And first thing that we're going to notice, uh, everything here is actually still in millimeters. Uh, so we're going to need to change that before we actually get into it. And that's down at the bottom right of our screen. You can change that very quickly here. So you can work in all sorts of units within Polyworks, uh, everything from microns up to US <laughs> survey feet. But we're working in inches today because that's what the, the drawing specifies. Um, and all we need to do in order to pull these measurements is we need to pick our two different planes while our uh, distance uh, measurement tool is on. So we're going to pick this plane here. And then we can go over and pick the opposite plane. And we want to place that measurement right out here in space. 5.97, we know it's supposed to be 6. Um, we could place down here in our geometry controls the nominal. We want it to be 6. And according to our drawing, um, we come down here, it is uh, 1 16th is the plus minus uh, tolerance. So we know that. That is 0, 0.625 and minus 0, 0.625. And you can see already here on the right side, it says pass because it, it does, uh, we have the polygonal model already here that we're measuring off of. This isn't a CAD. So it's able to make those measurements right away. Nominal is 6 inches. Measured, it actually is 5.976. Pretty darn close. Our tolerance is 1 16th. Our deviation is only outside, it is, it is slightly smaller by 0 0.0238 uh, inches. So it is a pass, it's within tolerance. Now we can go ahead and start doing this for the other um, dimension controls. So now with all of our, our distance measurements set, uh, we need to start setting a few other uh, items in here. So that'll be the diameter for each of these six holes on the bolt-up pattern. We can go ahead and do that right, right now. And we can actually do them all at the same time. So you can select all six of these cylinders. And uh, diameter is the first one that comes up. And it'll be 13 16 which is 0.8125. And our tolerance, of course, is going to be the same. 
uh, 1 16th, which is 0 0.0625 and 0 0.625. And those are now set. And now we want to do an angle feature here for this uh, 45 degree. It has to be plus or minus a quarter degree. Angles also very easy in this software. So we're going to select our angle tool. We'll select this face and this face. We can set the correct orientation. So let's maybe put it out here. Measuring 45.05. Our tolerance is going to be plus or minus one half nominal 45 now it shows as a pass so the very last thing that we have to do on this first section here is this r one quarter and that's referring to these um the radius of these little features here uh we actually didn't create this cylinder yet so you're going to watch this whole workflow so we want to select the polygonal feature I'm going to get right in here. And so you can see it does a best fit cylinder, kind of fits it there. It just selects the radius. So we know it's actually all these little bright green are the, the data points it's collecting. It looks like it's going to be a very good coverage. So we're going to say OK to that. And for this particular feature, we want radius. And we want it to be 0.25 nominal, plus or minus. 0 0.0625 and 0 0.0625. And this is our very first fail. All right, so now we have completed all the measurements uh, outlined here for uh, section AA, which is the one on the left side of our screen. We can see that right here. Uh, so everything is completed. I'm going to go ahead and um, do this middle section here. It's it's about the same, just a couple more measurements. Then I'm going to pick back up again with this video uh, on this last one because there's a couple uh, interesting ones there that we're going to look at. The last part that we have to input is the internal dimensions on the uh, the, the cavity on the inside. Fairly straightforward. Uh, the the tolerances have changed now, where it's uh, plus or minus ten thou. Uh, but the you're you're basically going to be inside. Um, inside plane to inside plane for, for the majors. That's pretty easy. But the interesting one, which is kind of the more difficult one to do uh, mechanically and uh, is, is fairly straightforward once you're working in 3D space, is to do the back wall uh, to the radius, uh, center of the radius here. All right, so we're going to select our distance measuring tool one more time here. We want to select the, the plane on the inside. And then the center axis of the uh, cylinder that we placed here, which represents the uh, radius of that angle. And uh, so we can just place our measurement there. And of course, we could put in now our nominal is going to be 2.4 inches, and it'll be plus or minus 10,000. So that is also a fail. All right, so now I've generated the last of these. So there's the four measurements on the internal dimensions of the, the cavity here. Uh, next step, we're going to put together a report. It's probably one of my favorite features of Polyworks is how quick and easy you can put together a really good report. Um, for this report today, I'm going to make it uh, three separate views. So one for each of the, the diagrams that are depicted here on the drawing. Uh, and we'll start off with the first one here on the left. So we're going to look at all the features here. I've selected these are the, the ones from the first drawing. Let us highlight them all and create a view. And hit create. And that's it. That's now we have already created one. So if we open up our report, you already see the first page here as that view with all the different measurements on it, uh, the same formatting as you've seen on the drawing. And then it has all the details below here. So uh, you, could, you can specify uh, specific names if you had that on your drawing for each object. Uh, the control type that's there, so if it's going to be distance, diameter, whatnot. Your nominal, your measured tolerance, your deviation from that tolerance, and whether or not it's pass or fail. If it's fail, you're going to see it highlight here in red. And that, but we know that already that uh, quarter inch radius uh, was a fail uh, from that first page. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put together the other two views here, and we'll take a look at the end. All right, so our report is complete. We've created the three views. Uh, there's automatically a title page generated. You can just put a, a simple view of your part here and all the details that are relevant on our first page. Uh, so we have our uh, the mirrored image from our drawing uh, with all the dimensions of our parts and the details of each dimension here. Uh, we did the same thing for side view and of course all the internal dimensions here, uh, which is our third view. And uh, you can see the two reds, that's the two fails uh, for the one for the measurements from the back plane up to the radius. So that is our entire workflow, uh, right from bringing in the SDL file from our scanned object, uh, building the entire inspection as according to what was written on the drawing. And um, without any CAD, we can generate a very accurate report uh, for our, our piece. Uh, the advantages of doing this digitally. Uh, not only is it rather quick, so this entire process uh, for a piece of this complexity, including the scanning, should take you about 30 minutes, possibly a little bit less. Um, you do have the ability to update that inspection in the future. So let's say you had to um, update your drawing or change some of the specifications uh, for this particular piece. You can always just go back and just edit the measurement that you input for the inspection, and it will automatically update that report. Uh, if you needed to possibly in the future come back or your QA department wants to see, uh, verify how a uh, particular measurement was taken, uh, you can always revisit that. It's all digital. It's, it's, it can be done an inf infinite number of times, um, preserved forever. So that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have anything else that you would like to see, always let us know. Uh, you can email us at support at myeng.ca or just leave a comment below. Until next time, thanks for watching.